What's going on, guys? Matt Wyke here with another Wyke Fitness Podcast. Today's episode, but first, I want to apologize. If you hear a mower in the background, it's not yours playing tricks on you. It's indeed a lawnmower. Uh, there are some people outside here uh, at my office that are mowing, but I absolutely have to get this uh, podcast recorded. So I apologize if that's coming through on the audio. Uh, I will try and, you know, do that noise reduction or whatever uh, in Audacity to try and clean that up a little bit. So I, I apologize if that's coming through on the audio. Uh, please bear with me. But today, I want to talk about a topic that, to be quite honest, it's frustrating. I feel that it's something that we shouldn't have to discuss, but I feel that it's something that we need to talk about as a society. Um, as a business owner, it's something that I need to think about. As a consumer, it's something that you need to think about. Uh, and, and what I'm talking about is a code of ethics. And, and this goes for individuals, businesses, um, organizations, federations, sports, whatever the case may be. Now, today, I, I, I'm going to kind of dive into my industry, the, the supplement and fitness industry, because we've had some unfortunate times uh lately and and it's really giving the industry as a whole a black eye and i feel like there's nothing really been in place or, or at least communicated that i have heard of and and i feel that it's something that more people more businesses you know more athletic organizations and federations need to look at and consider so my industry is full of fitness competitors, bodybuilders, you know, models, and, and, you know, those types of individuals. Now, if you read any of my content lately, uh, you know, this, this week I published something about um, if, if brands utilize, like, athletes or individuals as the face of their brand, that they're putting their entire business at risk. Now, what I mean by that is, now, the two individuals whose name I'm going to bring up, uh, you know, let's, let's make it three. So, right now, they're all allegations, uh, you know, innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Uh, we're going to let the, you know, legal system do its job and whatever the outcome may be is what it's going to be. But as of right now, all of these are allegations. Now, you have Sean Roden, Mr. Olympia. He won the 2018 Olympia last year. He beat Phil Heath uh, to kind of steal it steal it from him. Phil was going for eight. Sean came in, looked great, uh, won the Olympia. Shortly after the Olympia, like a couple weeks after, uh, allegedly... He had a woman come to his hotel room, and, and I'm not going to get into all the details. You can you can Google it, and you'll get more than enough information. And she claims that Sean raped her. Now, Sean is a paid sponsored athlete for a few different companies, one of which, really, they're piggybacking off of his name. Um, it's not a very well-known supplement company. Uh, I really don't even know much about them because they're just not really relevant. And that's really going to hurt them at this point. So in, in that instance, you know, they didn't say that they're not going to work with Sean anymore. In fact, they haven't said anything at all. And, you know, that brought up a few questions from consumers like, hey, What's happening now that, you know, Sean has these allegations? Are you going to back him? Are you going to kind of put everything on hold with him? And there's been no statement made. And you know what? It's it's their right, the supplement company's right to not want to discuss it. But at the same time, it makes people start to wonder like, okay, what's what's going on? 
Are they backing this guy? What's going to happen if he is convicted? Obviously, everybody's hoping that he's not convicted. I mean, rape allegations are, are no joke. That's, that's life-changing, whether you're innocent or you're guilty. I mean, right now, his name is just thrown in the mud. I, I don't know how somebody can recover from this, especially with all of the information that's coming out, um, even if proven, you know, proven innocent. You know, he, he just put himself in a bad situation, and it could have been completely avoided. Uh, you know, in today's times with the whole Me Too movement, and that's not to downplay what's going on in society today. I, I mean, you look at Harvey Weinstein and, and a lot of these multimillionaires who, who are doing these heinous things, these heinous crimes, and they're getting convicted. Um, so that's not to downplay what's going on. You know, what I'm trying to get across is these allegations are extremely serious and, and something that we need to look at. And, and you know, so you have the whole Sean Roden thing. Now you have this whole Jeremy Buendia, uh, uh, you know, I guess you can't even say lawsuit yet. Nobody has even sued him, which is why, you know, he's still proclaiming his innocence that none of this ever happened. But there are accusations out there that he has hit, beaten, struck assaulted, whatever terminology you want to use, allegedly, some of his previous girlfriends. Um, you know, there there have been images, there have been text messages, there have been videos, there's a whole bunch of different things. Now, recently, and I can't say this with 100% certainty, but sources are saying that um, Jeremy Buendia has been banned from the IFBB. Um, I do not know that as factual. I got that from multiple sources. They are credible sources, but the IFBB, uh, Jim Mannion has not come out and made a statement. I don't know if they're ever going to make a statement, but you know, if it is true, it'd be helpful for, you know, the public to know like, Hey, look, we're not going to see Jeremy at shows anymore. Um, but touching back on Sean, AMI came out right after the allegations came out, um, about the arrest warrant they severed ties immediately with Sean and said, you cannot compete in the 2019 Olympia and future Olympias until this whole ordeal is resolved. Um, which, you know what? It's a, it's a, a company. They can make their own decisions. Uh, you know, technically Sean is kind of employed by AMI being that, uh, you know, they do some media together and, and, they own the rights to the Mr. Olympia contest. So, you know, while I don't agree with their stance right now because he's not proven guilty, I, I can understand why they don't want that press. So they say, until further notice, Sean cannot compete at the Olympia. Now, the IFBB did not ban Sean. They're going to let the legal process go through. Um, then you have Nathan Dayasha, who, quite frankly, is one of the up-and-coming bodybuilders. Uh, he just won a show overseas. He now just pled guilty to supplying steroids to a gym. Nothing has been said as of yet at the time of recording this, which is July 25th, 2019. The IPB has not come out and said anything that Nathan Dayasha is, is banned or there's going to be some repercussion, whatever the case may be. There's been nothing like that. And that's where all of this kind of stems for this topic of, of this particular episode and the fact that I feel every organization across the board um, and, and federation needs to have a code of ethics in place, written down, that everyone signs on the dotted line that they've read, they understand, and, and they will uphold. So that when something unfortunate like this happens, everyone knows their rights. The organization has the ability to do X, Y, and Z. The accuser knows what's going to happen. The accuser also knew that, hey, this organization, this business, this whatever is not going to put up with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, whatever in their code of ethics. And there will be repercussions. So with that being said, I just feel that 
as a society, we tend to, I guess, I guess you can say, we tend to demonize people before the legal process really takes place. Um, I mean, you look at some of these NFL athletes who got busted for, for drugs. I mean, heck, you can go back and look at a whole bunch of Tiger Woods, all his allegations with all of these females. Michael Phelps with uh, the smoking weed and getting pulled over by the cops. Uh, you have Ray Rice, you know, hitting his girlfriend, fiance, whatever they were at the time, in an elevator. Uh, you know, you you have all of the the Kobe Bryant thing. You know, the allegations that, you know, he had sex with, with some girl. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Rape charges. You know, rape accusations. You know, he, he settled outside of court. Now, supposedly, she's coming back to sue him again for even more money. Um, but I, I feel that if athletes, celebrities, individuals, whatever classification you want to put these people under, whatever umbrella... You have to know what you're doing, okay? Um, the fact that Sean Roden had a female in his room. I mean, look, Sean Roden is a big dude. And, and he invited a bikini competitor to his room. Do I even need to go into detail there of the things that are probably going through your head right now? That's just what happens. We think, well, okay, big bodybuilder, muscular dude, invites a female competitor who's attractive, you know, fake boobs, fit. What what do you think is going to happen? Why wouldn't they meet outside of an actual room? Meet in the lobby. Meet at a restaurant. Meet anywhere meet at the freaking library i don't know but why would you choose your hotel room out of all the places to meet meet in the damn uh hallway but inviting a female into your room opens up a can of worms where it's going to be a he said she said dog fight and listen this accusation of rape from Sean Roden is going to get ugly. If it goes to trial, I mean, it's going to be, you know, two heavyweight boxers going back and forth with the evidence on both sides. Okay? So, an organization needs to grab hold of that and say, eh, see this paper right here? You signed on the dotted line. You knew what was going to happen. You put yourself in this situation, I can't help you. So according to this document, this is now what's going to happen. So whether it's you're fired from a business, you're put on leave, uh, you know, paid, unpaid, whatever the case may be, uh, your, your license is revoked, you're not allowed to compete, you know, whatever based off of the industry and, and you know, organization that you might be working with. But... I think as a society and as businessmen and women, we need to better protect our assets, okay? Now, I'm probably going to take flack for this, okay? But this is how if I were the IFBB, if I were Jim Mannion, how I would have handled the... Rodin, Buendia, and De Asha allegations. I would have stated that due to, you know, unfortunate circumstances where individual A, B, C, um, you know, decided to put themselves in a situation that has brought upon charges, accusations, whatever the case may be, it is our decision to, uh, you know, not not fire, but to put all competitions on hold for these individuals until further notice, 
and let the legal process play out. Now, I'm saying that for damage control. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to say these are allegations. Uh, they weren't convicted, so why are you robbing them of their ability to compete? Here's why. The backlash that you would get if these people become convicted and charged and put to jail, the backlash that you would get for allowing them to continue to compete and be around people where they could go out and do more harm I mean, let's 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 be honest. Rodin and Buendia both have allegations that involve women. It's not like Nathan Deasha, who it's about, you know, steroids. We're talking about rape and abuse. So, you know, by by putting these two individuals out there, again, they're innocent. I'm not telling you that I think they're guilty. I'm just playing devil's advocate of what would happen long term. So let's just say nothing happens. AMI never took Roden out of uh, the Mr. Olympia for 2019. And let's say he won again. Let's just say the following week, he's, he's found guilty. Okay, so now people are going to say, why did you protect a rapist? Why, why did you allow this predator to be among other females in Vegas? You know, not exactly one of the greatest cities to be in uh, when it comes to, you know, sex and drugs. Um... Why would you allow this individual to be a part of your organization? And th- now they're going to have to play damage control and and defend themselves of, of why they did that. So I, I think from that perspective, it's just wise for them to say, uh, you know, this individual is is removed from competition for the time being, you know, while the legal process takes place. And I mean, look, you know, they, they have sponsors. If their sponsors want to back them so they have some type of income, cool. Most of them are probably going to follow suit and they too will, you know, sever ties for the time being with these individuals. But I think, I think we need to have tougher policies, more enforcement, um, to, to have these individuals understand that when you put yourself in compromising situations, just being in that situation can have penalties. I mean, look, proven innocent, proven guilty. You put yourself in a situation that could have been avoided had you decided to go a different path. Now, granted... If somebody has mental health issues, and and I'm not saying that Jeremy Buendia does, even though he's come out publicly to say that he has anger issues, you know, he has he has some stuff that he needs to work on. And and I respect him being honest about that. But what steps has he taken to get better? You know, I've heard from sources, I, I've seen stuff on the internet where it's been one girlfriend after the next of the same allegations. So, with that being said, what took the IFBB so long, if my source is correct, in, in banning him from the organization? What took them so long if it's been years that this has been going on with police reports? Now, look, it's not the IBB's job to be calling up every police department to find if, if any of their athletes have, have any, you know, accusations or, or records. But 
People have been hearing these types of things for years now about some of these individuals. Why didn't the organization look into that? So I, I feel like I'm going down a rabbit hole and, and this episode could probably go on for another hour. But I'm going to end it here and, and you know, I just want people to, to think about what they're doing. What type of situation are you putting yourself in and how is that going to look in the eyes of the public, in the eyes of a jury, in the eyes of your employer, whether it's, you know, a, a normal nine to five or an employer in the sense of NFL, MLB, IFBB, NPC, whatever the case may be. How is that going to look in their eyes? And, and, you know, from the information that they gather, they can form their own opinion. There have been several people out on the internet these days that have formed their own opinion of Jeremy Buendia, Sean Roden, Nathan Dayasha, Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, uh, Wilt Chamberlain. Uh, I mean, you can go, there's a laundry list. You know, Harvey Weinstein, if you want to get into, you know, the, the TV and, and, and movie production types, types of stuff. Um, Matt Lauer. I mean, literally, there has been so much that has taken place over the last year that it's unheard of. So, everyone just needs to be more conscious and aware of the situation that they're going into, that they're putting themselves into, so that they can make a better decision of, is this the right thing for me? Am I doing the right thing? What is this? Could allegations come out? Could somebody claim something? You just need to protect yourself because no one else is going to look out for you. Um, so with that being said, you know, if, if you're a business owner, I really think you need to go back in your handbook, assuming you have one, and look to see if you have a code of ethics. If not, y you better put it in there. Um, you know, you better put something out and, and say, hey, look, you know, this was an oversight. We don't have this in our handbook, but... We feel very strongly about a certain code of ethics of, of how we expect you, who also represents our company, what you should, uh, you know, do and not do as an employee or, or, you know, whatever type of association they have with, with this business and organization and, and really tighten, you know, their, their system and their structure. Because everything can fall apart if allegations come out that certain businesses are, are hiring or have allegations against some of their employees. That puts that business and organization in a negative light, as well as the accuser, even if they're innocent. So, in the end, we have a problem. I think it's safe to say that everybody sees that. So, with that being said, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you guys are looking at this in a different light and, and see just how, just how serious of an issue this is. Um, but I would love your feedback. Let me know. Am I completely, completely off with, you know, how I would handle the situation? Uh, how would you do it? Leave it down in the comments. If you know, you're on YouTube or you're watching this on the website and you know, you're following along on social media would love your feedback at white fitness, all social media. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram would love to see you on there. Um, if you haven't already, I would love for you guys to subscribe to this podcast. It's a weekly podcast. I put it out for free. There are no ads, no, uh, advertisements or sponsors or anything like that. It's 1000% free and raw. Uh, there are no notes. Uh, it's just basically me rambling. <laughs> so if you like different information that makes you think, gives you some value, uh, I would appreciate the love and, uh, just, you know, subscribe, like it, leave a comment. It just helps me get in front of more people. And by all means, if you like this content, share it with somebody. If, if somebody's been talking to you about this very subject, send them the link so that they can come listen to it or watch it and so that they can gain some feedback and some value from it. But with that being said, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I appreciate the attention. I appreciate the love. And I hope to see you guys on the next episode.